So today we're going to go over the calculations for lab 12. This is the acid base titration laboratory. In the beginning, you're actually going to use quite a bit of what you did in the water hardness laboratory, mathematically speaking. And then we're going to advance upon that, introducing the concepts of acid base, equilibrium, and pH. So the data for this laboratory is pretty straightforward. At the bottom here in green, you've got two known values. Because remember, whenever you do a titration, you're using a known material to determine the properties of an unknown material. So we need to know a lot about one of the product, one of the materials in the system. We're using NaOH to titrate vinegar, which is a solution of acetic acid. So we need to know the concentration of the NaOH. So the NaOH, the sodium hydroxide, is at 1.0 molar. We also need to know the volume of acetic acid that we're going to test, just like we had to know the volume of the water we tested in the water hardness laboratory. So the volume of each of our samples in acetic acid is 25.0 milliliters. The data you collect off the pictures are the volumes from the burettes. So we have an initial and a final volume for the burette. And then we can determine the amount of NaOH used out of the burette by taking the final and subtracting the initial. So that's going to get us our volume of NaOH. Now, in question one, it says using the procedure you learned in the hardness of water laboratory, determine the average molarity of the acetic acid solution. So going back to the water hardness laboratory, what we had to do was we had to determine, okay, we know the concentration of NaOH and we know the volume of NaOH that we used. So that allows us to calculate the moles of NaOH we used. Now I'm gonna be using, as always, example data. And I'm actually gonna be using a slightly different formula here because part of this laboratory is learning to write the formula for the neutralization between NaOH and acetic acid, okay? So I'm gonna be using a slightly different formula than you guys would use. Now, determining the moles of the base, NaOH, is fairly straightforward. It's just solving a molarity equation for the moles. Remember, molarity is equal to moles divided by volume. So if I multiply both sides by the volume, I get the molarity, concentration, times the volume equals the number of moles. So then I could do this. Say I had a 1.5 molar solution of NaOH. This is my theoretical, remember? 1.5 molar solution, and I used 20 milliliters of the original sample, right? 20 milliliters of, or of the base. That means that I would have used 0 0.030 moles of NaOH, and that's simple for you guys to do, right? This would be where you would enter in the concentration of your base, which we just talked about in the last slide. And then this would be where you would use the volume of the base that you determine from the burette readings. Note, remember, the burette readings are in milliliters. This has to be in liters because molarity is moles per liter. So in order for this to cancel out, this has to be in liters. So don't forget to turn your milliliter measurements into liter measurements when you do this calculation. All right, so that's the first part. Now I know how many moles of the base I used. The second step is I have to determine how many moles of the acetic acid that I'm gonna use through stoichiometry. Now I'm gonna be a little nice to you, similar to what you're using, but I'm using a different system than you're using. So in this one, I'm using a hypothetical system, and it's hypothetical, it's not real of taking sulfuric acid, neutralizing it with sodium hydroxide to get um, sodium hydrosulfate and water, right? It's a similar setup to what you're using, but I didn't want to use the exact same thing we're using because I want you to work out that equation for the neutralization of acetic acid with NaOH. In this setup, the stoichiometry between the NaOH and the H2SO4 is one to one, right? And since it's one to one, that means my moles of base is gonna be equal to my moles of acid. So I know if I used 0 0.03 moles of NaOH, I also used 0 0.03 moles of acid in the system. This allows us to determine a concentration of the acid because remember, concentration is moles divided by volume. So in this situation, I've got the moles that I just calculated. And then in my theoretical calculation, I used 100 milliliters of an acetic solution. So that would translate into 0 0.100 liters. All right, now yours is obviously different because you're not using 100 milliliters, you're using 25 milliliters. So that's gonna change what this is, just like these will be changed for your data. So in this calculation, I would say that, okay, my H2SO4 is 0 0.300 molar 
H2SO4. All right, and again, this is completely theoretical. All right, all of what we did in question one is pretty much what we did throughout the entirety of the water hardness lab. So now we're gonna get into the new stuff. So in class, we've been talking about the concept of equilibrium constants, right? Now, equilibrium constants for weak acids, and H2SO4 isn't a weak acid, I'm just mimicking it one as one for this purposes, but you get the idea. So equilibrium constants for weak acids can be written, right? Now remember, those are unitless. So given the equation below, determine the equilibrium expression and use the concentration you determined for acetic acid in question one, determine the concentration of hydronium at equilibrium. Now, in the laboratory itself, it gives you the uh, acid disassociation equation for acetic acid. But I'm going to begin, again, using this one here, right? So, and again, H2SO4 is not a weak acid, so it doesn't actually do this, but I'm just using this for illustrative purposes. So, here's an expression. H2SO4 plus water yields my HSO4 minus plus hydronium. So, I want to write an equilibrium expression for this. Now, remember, an equilibrium expression is the product of the products divided by product of the reactants. Remember, products over reactants. Now there's a couple little nitpicky things we have to get in there. Note, I don't have the water on the bottom. Remember, pure solids, pure liquids are not put into equilibrium expressions, so the water doesn't go into our expression. We also have to um, raise each of them to the power of the coefficient in front of them. Now, in this case, pretty good because there's a one in front of everything. So each of these is raised to the first power, which just means this. So my equilibrium expression for the acid is hydronium concentration time, times HSO4 concentration divided by H2SO4 concentration. That's my equilibrium expression. So now I need to solve this for hydronium. Well, one thing we have to remember here is every time the hydronium is produced you're also producing an HSO4 right in the setup that we've put together H2SO4 always breaks into one hydronium and one HSO4 that means that those two concentrations in an isolated system always have to be equal so we can then simplify this expression and make both of our top values worth X all right so that means our equilibrium expression is simplified to K sub A equals X squared over H2SO4. Then when we solve for X, we would multiply both sides by K2S4, or H2SO4, right? Which means we'd end up with K sub A times H2SO4. And then we take the square root of that to determine what X is. So X would be equal to the square root of K sub A times H2SO4, right? We could then input our values. Now we'll use this equilibrium constant up here, 1.8 times 10 to the minus five times the concentration of H2SO4. And in this case, our concentration was 0 0.100, right? So that gets us a concentration of H2SO4 of 1.341 times 10 to the minus three molar. That's our hydronium concentration. It's also the concentration of HSO4 minus in this situation, okay? And again, this is the same as what you're gonna use. This value is different. This value here is going to be the answer you got in the previous question, right? The concentration of um, acetic acid you determined in the previous question, question one. So don't just copy this down. This is going to be equal to the concentration you determined in question one. But the mathematics works out pretty much the same. All right, question three. Calculate the mass percentage of acetic acid in vinegar using the moles of acetic acid, not molarity, you calculate in question one. The molar mass of acetic acid and assuming vinegar has a density of 1.00 grams per milliliter. All right, sounds complicated really isn't. The biggest mistake people use here or do here is when they look at that and it says you calculated in question one, they immediately go for the last answer in question one. But remember, the last answer in question one was the molarity 
of the acetic acid, not the moles of the acetic acid. All right. If you go back and you look, the moles of the acetic acid is equal to the moles of the base you used. So that's equal to the concentration of the base times the volume of the base used. All right. So if we go back and we look at slide one, that's going to be equal to 0 0.030 moles. All right. That would be the value that we used, not the molarity. So that's our moles of acetic acid. Well, mass percentage means we have to be in mass. So our second step is going to be determining how many grams of acetic acid we have. So in this case, again, I'm using H2SO4 as a stand in as an example. So H2SO4 breaks apart uh, into 98.080 grams per mole. And that's simple molar mass conversion that you guys have done a million times at this point. To figure out the mass of that, you would take the number of moles you have, multiply it by the molar mass, moles would cancel out, leaving you in grams, and you would get that you had 2.942 grams of H2SO4 in this sample. All right. Now, then we have to determine the mass percentage. And if you remember mass percentage, mass percentage is mass of the solute divided by mass of the solution times 100%. So our solute is the 2.942 grams. Our solution was the total mass of the acetic acid solution, right? So in this case, it's the H2SO4 solution. If we go back and we look at slide one, it was 100 milliliters. So if we use this conversion that it's one gram per milliliter, that would turn out to be 100 grams. So it'd be 2.942 grams divided by 100 grams multiplied by 100% equals 2.94%. So this would be the mass percentage. It's 2.94% H2SO4, right, by mass. That's our first value that we're going to take at the end. Last question, question four. Now, there's actually a couple of parts to question four, and when I rewrite the lab, I might polish this wording a little bit. Commercial vinegar is 5% and approximately a pH of 2.3. Using your determined values, calculate the percent error for your mass percentages and pH. Well, first thing is, we haven't calculated a pH yet. I must have deleted that question somewhere along the way when I was rewriting this, but it's easy to do, right? So we have to calculate the pH because we can't get a um, percent error until we actually do the value. So first thing we got to do is calculate the percent or the pH of the system. So to do this, you're going to use the concentration that you calculated in question two. So remember, going back to question two, you calculated the hydronium concentration. That was the value you got at the end of the question two. Well, pH is simply the negative log of the hydronium concentration. Now, if you've not used your scientific calculator in a while, it might be tricky, but there's going to be a key on your calculator that is labeled LOG. That's what you've got to use, all right? Be sure you're using the LOG key, not the LN key. That's the natural log key. We're using a log base 10, which is LOG, all right? So pH is the negative log of the concentration. So you take the hydronium concentration, and this is the value we calculated in question two. We take the log of that, and then we take the negative of that. Because when you do this, you're gonna end up with negative 2.87. But when we take a negative of a negative, we end up with a positive. So the pH for our system is 2.87, all right? That's our pH of the system. So that sets us up to do the percent errors for the both of the measurements. Now note, it says calculate the percent error for both the mass percentage and the pH. Don't forget to do one or the other, all right? So you're gonna get your pH from this one, step one, and then your mass percentage is the answer to question two. And as always, a percent error is nothing more than 100% times the absolute value so this is always going to be a positive value. The actual value minus the experimental value divided by the actual value. Now I gave you the actual values up here in the question. The actual value for acetic acid mass percent is, should be 5% and it should be 2.3 pH. So that's what you're going to do to solve this. So for example, if I was comparing these two, which I'm not because they're not the actual things, right? I would do 2.3 minus 2.8 divided by 2.3, and then multiply that by 
You're going to record the uh, percent error for both of these at the end. Note you're going to be using your average pH and your average mass percent on both of these to calculate your percent error. I don't need three percent errors, one for each run. I just need the percent error of the average. All right. And that's all you got to do turning this lab. And I hope this helps.